One of the most highly anticipated games this year is Metro Exodus, the new entry in the acclaimed post-apocalyptic first-person shooter video game series. The Metro games are particularly known for offering an engrossing survival horror gameplay experience, as well as their immersive setting and an atmospheric world. Such attributes should come as no surprise, given the development studio for a games is comprised of many of the developers behind the Stalker series, which is celebrated for many of the same reasons, albeit in a more open-world format. It's been close to six years since we saw a new Metro game, with Last Light having launched back in May 14th, 2013. So it goes without saying that the newest entry, Exodus, which launches on February 15th, 2019, is a title that fans have been eagerly awaiting for quite some time, which is why it's so unfortunate that the game is being marred by controversy when it's just two weeks out. The source of the controversy is an announcement that publisher Deep Silver made about the game on January 28th, 2019, involving an exclusivity deal with Epic Games Store. The announcement reads as follows. Epic Games and Deep Silver today announced the partnership that will see the digitally distributed PC version of the highly anticipated Metro Exodus release on February 15th, 2019, solely through the Epic Games Store. Players worldwide can now pre-purchase both Standard and Gold editions at EpicGames.com, from $49.99 US dollars in North America and $59.99 euros in most European countries. All pre-orders include the Metro Exodus original soundtrack and the World of Metro digital art book. Metro is amazing and is deservedly one of the most anticipated PC titles of 2019, said Tim Sweeney, founder and CEO of Epic. We are partnering with Deep Silver to launch Metro Exodus, underpinned by Epic's marketing support and commitment to offering an 88% revenue split, enabling game creators to further reinvest in building great games and improving the economics of game stores for everybody. We are delighted to partner with Epic to bring the digital PC version of Metro Exodus to market, said Dr. Clemens Kundertitz, CEO of Deep Silver. Epic's generous revenue terms are a game changer that will allow publishers to invest more into content creation or pass on savings to the players. By teaming up with Epic, we will be able to invest more into the future of Metro and our ongoing partnership with series developer 4A Games to the benefit of our Metro fans. Any customer with an outstanding pre-order for Metro Exodus on PC through any digital retailer will receive their game as expected. Below that is an FAQ section providing details about buyers who pre-order the game on Steam, which states that any pre-orders that have already been made on that platform, including the game, the expansion pass, and any pre-order bonuses, will be honored, and that those who ordered the game's standard edition on Steam will have the ability to purchase the expansion pass in the future. So, the bottom line is that a mere two weeks before the game's launch, Deep Silver decided to announce, out of the blue, that they would be foregoing Steam in favor of Epic Game Store, and one look at forums and social media will reveal that this did not sit well with gamers at all. Making matters worse was a response to a user who inquired about physical copies and who expressed how making such an abrupt announcement two weeks before a game's launch is unprofessional. Metro's Twitter replied with, quote, Your physical copy of Metro Exodus will now ship with an epic key. This right here is especially egregious, given that Metro Exodus's promotional material advertised that anyone who pre-ordered physical copies would be playing the game on Steam. So it stands to reason that if digital Steam pre-orders of Metro Exodus made under the pretense that the game would be playable on Steam will be honored, then the same should apply to physical Steam pre-orders as well. But instead, consumers who bought physical copies are being told that the platform they purchased the game for is being switched by force. If you go to the announcement's official website and scroll all the way down, there's a section that addresses this, but the statement provided is pretty deceptive. This FAQ excerpt asks, I have pre-ordered a physical copy of Metro Exodus for PC. How will this news affect me? The response reads, quote, This will not affect you at all. You will receive your packaged game with a key allowing you to play. We all know this is complete and utter bullshit. Players who bought the physical copy will be affected in that they'll be forced to use the Epic Game Store as the platform of choice rather than the more widely preferred Steam. The notion that this news will have no effect on buyers whatsoever is an outright lie. After all, it's no secret that Steam and Epic Game Store look and function quite differently, with the former being much more feature complete. 
Aside from it being the tried and true platform of choice that PC players have the majority of their games installed in, it's also got a wide variety of convenient features that Epic Game Store is sorely lacking, such as cloud saves and the ability to directly stream games for easy viewing. Furthermore, as this recent article by website IGN highlighted, the Epic Game Store lacks basic functionalities like the ability to chat with friends, achievements for players to unlock, and user reviews that enable players to leave feedback and make informed decisions about listed products. Another major point of contention of the Epic Game Store is that unlike Steam, it doesn't have an offline mode, meaning players have to be connected to the internet at all times to play games bought on this platform, which is a big no-no. Not to mention that there is a low level of confidence when it comes to how Epic handles and protects user data. Some may recall that earlier this year, on January 16th, 2019, it was reported that a bug and vulnerability within Fortnite allowed hackers to access millions of accounts that could be used to buy and gift the game's premium currency V-Bucks. And the year before that, on March 2018, Fortnite players reported that their accounts were hacked and charged up to hundreds of dollars on them. Furthermore, on December of last year, you may recall that concerns were raised on Reddit about how Epic Games' privacy policy may not comply with Europe's general data protection regulations, with one user claiming to be a certified data protection officer confirming that there are aspects of the policy's language that are not up to code. Epic founder Tim Sweeney did eventually address concerns regarding data protection and rumors about data allegedly being shared with Chinese company Tencent with the following statement. Epic does not share user data with Tencent or any other company. We don't share it, sell it, or broker access to it for advertising like so many other companies do. I'm the founder and controlling shareholder of Epic and would never allow this to happen. The language related to sharing data with the parent companies refers to Epic Games Inc. It's a US-based company. This language exists because when you buy an Epic game in certain territories like Europe, the seller of record is our local, e.g. European, subsidiary company for tax purposes but the data is ultimately stored by Epic Games Inc. Tencent is not a parent company of Epic. Tencent is an independent company that's a minority investor in Epic, alongside many others. However, they do not have any sort of access to our customer data. The other language around data in the EU LA generally exists to cover the cases where we use third-party service providers as part of operating our online services. For example, our game servers and databases are hosted on Amazon Web Services. However, these third parties do not have the right to use or access Epic customer data in any way except for providing that service. Something else that initially put a damper on optics around the Epic Game Store was its initially sketchy refund policy, which asked the user for all kinds of data before a requested refund could be processed. Fortunately, a proper refund policy has recently been implemented, one that allows players to get their money back as long as the game was purchased within 14 days and hasn't been played for more than two hours. Slowly but surely, aspects of Epic Game Store have been improving, but the platform is still woefully lacking in key features compared to Steam. And look, it's not that I'm entirely blaming Epic for lacking features that took Steam years to finally implement. But when the Epic Game Store is clearly not ready to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steam yet in its current state, there is no justification for the platform to start nabbing exclusivity deals. I'm all for giving Epic Game Store time to grow and flourish, but until it catches up to what Steam has to offer, players shouldn't be forced to play PC games on what is a vastly inferior platform. Hell, platform exclusivity on PC should never be a thing, period. Instead of striving to force players into using their platform, Epic should be striving to make people want to use their platform through their own volition by simply offering better features and services. There is nothing consumers hate more than having their choice taken away, and the backlash against Metro Exodus's last-minute exclusivity deal announcement is Exhibit A. It's worth noting that there are aspects of Metro Exodus being sold on Epic Game Store that are advantageous to both the developers and the consumers. From the publisher and developer's perspective, I totally understand that the 88% cut versus Steam's ass-backwards performance-based 70-80% to cut is far more enticing. From the consumer's end, one cool result of Metro Exodus being sold on Epic Game Store and getting a bigger cut is that the game costs $10 less, $50 instead of Steam's $60 price tag. 
But that's where it should have stopped. Consumers should have been given this information and then allowed to choose between buying the game for $10 less on Epic at the sacrifice of certain missing key features like cloud saves, or buying the game for $10 more on Steam so they could take advantage of some of its more advanced features and keep their library of games under one roof. Let consumers weigh their options and allow them to pick the platform that's best suited for them, especially when your platform is in no condition to compete. Say what you want about Steam, but it's never locked down games under exclusivity contracts, at least not that I can remember. You can see how easy it was for Deep Silver to pull Metro Exodus out of the platform. Speaking of Steam, they did respond to Metro Exodus's defection in a notice posted on the game's official Steam page, which reads as follows. Sales of Metro Exodus have been discontinued on Steam due to a publisher decision to make the game exclusive to another PC store. The developer and publisher have assured us that all prior sales of the game on Steam will be fulfilled on Steam, and Steam owners will be able to access the game and any future updates or DLC through Steam. We think the decision to remove the game is unfair to Steam customers, especially after a long pre-sale period. We apologize to Steam customers that were expecting it to be available for sale through the February 15th release date, but we were only recently informed of the decision and given limited time to let everyone know. Honestly, I don't disagree with the notion that this feels somewhat unfair or at the very least like a major inconvenience to customers. To some extent, Steam is saying this because competition's getting pretty sticky as Epic continues to nab major exclusives like Metro Exodus, Division 2, and whatnot, but there is no denying that in this case, this was all very short notice, many copies had already been sold on Steam, and Deep Silver's decision completely pulled the rug from under consumers by denying them choice of preferred platform, with physical pre-orders promising Steam keys in particular going unfulfilled to many buyers' dismay. Plenty of people out there would have been willing to pay the full $60 for the convenience of cloud saves or for the fun factor of achievements that Steam offers. Now, Deep Silver did update their announcement on Steam to clarify that Metro Exodus will eventually return to Steam on February 14th, 2020, indicating a one-year exclusivity agreement. But I mean, it won't matter by then, as the game will have run its course. Worth keeping in mind is that, from my understanding, this deal was struck by the publisher, Deep Silver, and not by developers for a games. While we don't really know what the developers think about this whole ordeal, it doesn't seem like there's any blame to shift their way. Assuming this is true, I have to highlight what a shitty situation this must all be for them. The developers have poured so much time, energy, and resources into creating this passion project, only for its hyped release to be marred by the publisher's decision to strike a denounced exclusive deal with a premature platform, a deal that will only split the PC gaming community. There's a good chance that this ordeal will significantly lower Metro Exodus's PC sales performance with all the negative feedback going around, and with Epic Games Store lacking features and becoming less reputable. Backlash has spread far and wide enough that users have even gone out of their way to review bomb past Metro entries on Steam, a move that I personally don't much agree with given those two games have very little to do with the current controversy surrounding Metro Exodus. Then again, given players won't be able to provide user reviews on the Epic Game Store because the platform lacks that feature, an angry crowd is bound to vent somewhere. So yeah, that's pretty much where we're currently at with this whole situation, and my position is that Deep Silver really dropped the ball here. I'm all for competition, I can even understand Epic keeping certain games they publish, like Fortnite exclusive to Epic Game Store, and Valve keeping certain games they publish, like Dota 2 exclusive to Steam. But in the case of Metro Exodus, we are talking about a third-party title that has no place being exclusive to anything that pulled the rug from under consumers two weeks before launch. Epic's far overreaching here with their pursuit for exclusives, and Deep Silver was rather short-sighted when they decided to sign the contract. If Epic wishes to compete, that's fine, but they should strive to offer better features and services that will entice gamers to their platform, rather than take cheap shots with inconvenient and detrimental schemes that strip away choice. As an example, CD Projekt's GOG is unique in that none of the games the platform sells have DRM, and that alone has driven a lot of players to make their game purchases on that platform. If Epic can simply do what Steam does but better while innovating on various fronts, they won't need to resort to splitting the PC gaming community to grow their user base. All that aside, I do wish the developers over at 4A Games who unwittingly got caught in the middle of this mess the best of luck. 
I hope Metro Exodus ends up living up to the hype, and I hope people give the game's merits a fair chance, even with the dark cloud of anti-consumer business decisions surrounding it. These are one man's perspective anyway, I'd love to hear what your take is on Metro Exodus releasing on PC exclusively for the Epic Games Store in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, Stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.